Happy Father's Day from my floor. The lighting is best here and it's just where I want to sit. In this episode of Sativa Sunday, I am giving oh, the, just the biggest dose of honor that I can give to the father of cannabis. I am referring to none other than the Israeli organic chemist, Raphael Meshulam. For over 50 years, this man has been researching all of the gifts and compounds and wonders of the cannabis sativa plant. And in 1964, he isolated the compound that we know and love as THC, tetrahydrocannabinol. He also discovered and isolated the CBD compound as well as the endocannabinoid system that we have within us. So um, all of the medical research that is being done today is built on the foundation that he laid. So happy Father's Day, Professor Mashulam. I hope to have a special slice of cake with you and Dahlia. I don't know, I just thought I would put that out there. Okay, but back to business. And that is uh, bringing truth to the cannabis conversation. There's something going on and it needs to be called out because it is happening in medical healing therapeutic context and this is not okay. It is a misleading that is um, cause, it, it creates devastation and it need not be. And here's what it is. I'm calling it THC shame and also THC resistance. And this can be seen in the form of, and they are heralding the, um, the wonders, the healing wonders of CBD, which is the non-psychoactive compound. And then, and so what's happened now, both in the marketplace and in the mindset is this, is this thought of, I shun THC because of its association with psychoaction. So I shun it and it's as though now just bear with me because i'm trying to give words to something real subtle but i'm gonna try to make it not so subtle and try to solidify it and what i see it as it's like it's like thc is like the you know like the 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 woman you don't bring home to mom and cbd you know is this like lovely dainty demure you know um virginal lady who allows the patient to keep their their you know their purity to maintain their innocence this is what it seems like it's almost like they're getting their hands dirty if they were to touch thc and that they are like you know staying oh so virtuous by trying to get ratios that are super high cbd or only cbd and trying to as i say shun and and avoid thc but the problem with that is that in many instances, such as um, Alzheimer's as a very classic, undebatable example, THC is the compound that is doing the heavy lifting. It is the, it's the compound that is, like in the case of Alzheimer's, it's the compound that is helping to break up the plaque that's in those um, pathways. CBD's not doing that. It's the one that's like stimulating new neural growth now, now CBD, you know, it's helping with that de-inflammation and, and so, for, I mean, so it's, it's not to take anything away from CBD, but it's to say that it is a misrepresentation to, to believe that they are synonymous, that you can just do, you could, that CBD does the same healing work that THC does, because that's just not the case. So um, it's, that is some serious, it's, it's beyond shady, it's beyond harmful to, um, you know, to let that kind of idea go go forth they're not synonymous so that being the case i'm like why why are people treating thc like this hot potato consider even my own self like why did i shun it for all the years that i shunned it and it's like i thought back to the fact that it was such an ingrained message you know starting i mean from like the early 30s the mid certainly by the mid 30s it was a, like a, 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 a consistent drop, drop of water, leak, 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 
into the, you know, in, into the sponge of our minds saying completely untrue things about this plant and about cycle action, the cycle action that comes with this plant. So what's been suggested is that the cycle activity that you would get from cannabis is like um, one of like delirium or um, psychosis, you know, like really kind of fiendish and frightening behaviors. And, the, and that's not the case at all. I will tell you that the most disturbing thing that comes from the cycle action of cannabis is a sense of paranoia. And oftentimes that has to do with just living in a prohibited world and partaking in activity that, that you understand is criminalized. So sometimes just that conflict of, um, you know, just that disconnect can kind of create like a, oh, I'm going to be in trouble, a sneaky kind of feel. Um, and then also it could be, I mean, it is so complex. There's 500 compounds in that plant and how many are in you? You know, you are a complex being. That is a complex plant and, they, and everyone interacts differently. So for some, the, it, could, it, it is often just the case that you didn't find your right strain yet, you know. And so, uh, so much patience is given to the psychiatrists who write out all these different, very toxic, often lethal prescriptions and they say oh you didn't like that that didn't work for you you need a new dose you know we, you, we give them time to kind of get it right give, give the you know botanical option some time so in those cases when paranoia does show up that was just not an optimal strain for you um but one i'm sh almost certain could be found and then if in the case that someone might take too much the worst that will happen is sleep you will sleep, you will sleep deep. You might have the best sleep you've ever had, actually. In fact, it's a great friend for those um, people who suffer from, from insomnia. And there is no other crop, substance known to man that could more disrupt major industries today. I mean, and do it effortlessly you know, in the form of a weed that, that, that is ready to serve in three to four months. That, you know, and it is taking care of so many issues. So, so this, is, this has to do with the why. Why did we get that messaging in the mid-30s? Why was that suggestion put out there? Those, I'm gonna put in here some images so that you can see some of the pictures that were, you know, <clears throat> used very successfully to implant messages um, about the plant being associated with certain brown people, about um, it, you know, having a very unpleasant, unfruitful, unwholesome effect on the mind. And that stuck. And so now, and now it just becomes this unexamined, accepted belief like, oh God, that, you know, that just makes you crazy. Oh, that, that is to be avoided, is that, is that Cannabis is not those, those negative things that it was um, just portrayed as. It is a euphoriant. That means that it, the state of mind that it gives the user is one of well-being. That's what the word euphoria means. That's what it comes from, a state of wellness, well-being. So I ask you, what government would go out of its way to demonize a state of mind that is well. They would, you understand? You understand how diabolical that is? Because then when people have experienced it and then they say like, what? This is the feeling? After I was told to expect the flames of hell to burn me <laughs> and I actually feel well, I feel something like wholeness you know and then because of its revelatory nature uh in time you may fall out of step with social syncopation because of course that is you know built on um things that don't affirm life and you and you come to know that and so you do you know you may fall out of step with norms and that is one of the primary reasons why um, the plant is so hated and has been so um, attacked and kept, you know, kept from us. With the THC shame and the THC resistance is that that 
kind of thinking, it is holding up progress and it is holding up healing. There's cases where, you know, a, a parent may be needing to make a decision on behalf of their um, of their child, and the and the and the best care that they would get would include THC because I mean, there's actually uh, most of the science suggests that whole plant, full spectrum. Um, use of the plant is what's best. This idea of like stripping and stripping and pulling and you presume that you could just start playing Jenga with it and it's going to still have the same potency or the same um, richness and effect and it's just not the case. So the truth is that there is symbiosis that happens between THC and CBD together and um, and so they they need each other they work best together and I understand like that uh, recreationally sometimes like THC is driven after and, 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 and plants are bred you know for a high yield in that but I'm speaking specifically of those who, so I'm not talking about the people who love the THC and who chase after it um, I'm with you but I'm really talking about those who have this dilemma please let it go let that dilemma go. Let that THC shame and that THC resistance go. Please consider the source from which it came. Who put that shame and that resistance attached it? You know, and why did they do that? They did it for uh, you know, self-serving commercial and economic motivations. It is not out of concern for one's well-being. Cannabis is a euphoriant because it creates wellness in the minds and bodies of those who consume it. So we have got to, you know, start thinking critically, start thinking for ourselves, and start accepting what we see and as disappointing as it is. But please, THC is your friend. Please, accept its gifts.